4-H families. My name is Miss Becky. Some of you might know me from the ECC and I'm here to uh, share a video with you about some nature. At the ECC we spend a lot of time outside in nature looking at rocks, playing with sticks, inventing lots of creative ways to play or um, design with different things in nature. And I know that a lot of kids like to play with rocks. So I found some great rock books that I'd like to share with you. And today this one is called, If You Find a Rock. This book is written by Peggy Christian and it's illustrated by Barbara Hirsch Lember. But Barbara did not draw the pictures. She took the pictures with her camera. So these illustrations are photographs. That's right. If you find a rock, I'm wondering if any of you have rock collections. I did when I was little and some of my kids are starting to do that now. If you find a rock, do you see all the different shapes and sizes? Sometimes we do sorting with rocks or other materials. Lots of other ideas in this book too. I wonder if you can relate. If you find a rock, a nice, flat, rounded rock that sits just right in the crook of your finger, then you have a skipping rock. You toss it out in the water just so and see it trip across the surface, making a chain of spreading rings. Have you ever skipped a rock? Maybe in a pond or a stream? I think that's very fun to do. Or maybe you find a soft white rock. A rock that feels dusty in your fingers. Then you have a chalk rock. And you use it to make pictures on the pavement. I wonder if you have ever found one of those. It's fun to draw, I think, with rocks. Or maybe you might find a big mossy rock by the side of a long, steep trail. Then you have a resting rock. And as you sit down, you feel the cool moss squish beneath you. Have you ever seen moss growing on a rock or a tree? It's soft and green, kind of squishy. It's a type of plant. Then again, you might find a rock with a stripe running all the way around it. Trace the line with your finger. It must circle all the way around. And if it does, you have a wishing rock. And you whisper what you want before you throw it. That seems very unusual. But one time I did find a wishing rock. I wonder if you can find one too. If you find a rock, a big rock by the edge of the water. Then you have found a splashing rock. When it hits the surface, the water jumps out of the way, raining back down on your outstretched hands. The bigger the rock, the wetter you get. Why is that, do you think? Hmm, I think so too. Maybe a great big rock. Maybe it would be harder to pick up because it's so, yeah, heavy. And if you throw it in the water, it might fall very quickly down and make a great big splash. I wonder if you've ever tried that before. I have. I think it's fun. Maybe. 
you find a pile of small, round pebbles. Then you have found sifting rocks, and you can scoop up a handful and let them slide slowly through your fingers. Do you notice that photograph? It was also on the front cover of this book. Sometimes it's easier to find lots of tiny rocks, because sometimes paths or driveways are made of those. I wonder if you have found any. Or you might find a rock whose water-smooth surface catches your eye. If it feels easy in your hand when you rub it, then you have found a worry rock. You rub it between your fingers and your troubles are smoothed away. Sometimes I like to feel a rock that's super smooth and rub it between my fingers. Sometimes it might even be a calming rock because it helps you feel a little better. Sometimes we use that, uh, do that with those little glass beads we have in the classrooms as well. Then again, you might find a rock sitting in a grassy field. Push it over. You have found a hiding rock. And in the cool, dark underside live all kinds of things that creep and crawl and hide out of sight. Have you ever turned a rock over or a log and looked under it? What did you find? Sometimes I see worms or roly polies or other spiders or insects. If you find a rock, a great rock, that towers over you, then you have found a climbing rock. Hold on with your toes and fingers, grip as hard as you can, and stretch up and pull until you reach the top, where you feel much grander than you did on the ground. If you have ever gone hiking in the woods or along a path, you might have found a great climbing rock before. It's kind of fun to get up on the top and feel so tall and big. Maybe you will find a twisting line of rocks sticking up out of a creek. Then you have found crossing rocks, which wait to meet your feet as you pass over the water, rushing away all around you. Looks like those giant rocks are along a creek or river. And that person is hopping on them to get across. That looks like fun. Uh, why do you think those rocks would be smooth if water is nearby? What do you think made the rocks smooth like that? You have a lot of ideas. Or you might find a rock with a print of something else, a leaf or a shell. Then you have found a fossil rock. And you feel the shape of something that lived long, long ago when the rock was young. Have you ever seen one of those? It's very interesting. It almost looks like the impression of a shell or an animal was pushed into the rock. Sort of like when we use clay sometimes at the ECC. If we push something in it and lift it off, we see the impression, don't we? In those fossil rocks, you see the impression, the shape of what was there before. Then again, you could find a small, rounded rock right in front of your toe as you go down the sidewalk. You have found a walking rock, and you kick it ahead of you and let it lead 
take you home. Have you ever done that? Found a rock when you're walking and then kicked it, walked up to it, kicked it again, walked up to it. Sometimes that can be fun also. If you find a rock, a rock that's not a skipping rock or a chalk rock or a rusting rock or a wishing rock, that's not a splashing rock or a sifting rock or a worry rock or a hiding rock, one that's not even a climbing rock or a crossing rock or a fossil rock, or a walking rock, but you like it anyway because it reminds you of a place or a feeling or someone important, then you have found a memory rock. And sometimes those are the best rocks I like that book. I have found memory rocks before. In fact, sometimes my family and I pick up rocks on our different hikes or different trips we go on, and we keep them in a collection so we can remember when we went to that place or visited a person in a certain place. We have done that a few different times. In fact, I have some here in the book they talked about a rock that fits just in the crook of your finger. It could be a skipping rock. And this one, if you can tell, is very flat. That would be a good skipping rock. Feels very smooth also. And then we've also found chalk rocks. Like the book mentioned, these are dusty and sometimes you can write with them on the sidewalk or a dark uh, pavement. The book also mentioned striped rocks. Can you see those stripes on there? I think striped rocks are sometimes harder to find, so they're extra fun when you locate them. And they're also super smooth rocks that you might like to rub. And look at this one. I don't know if you can tell, but it looks like there are holes in this rock. And I'm wondering what made those holes? Are they from bubbles that popped? Are they from an animal or something else? It's hard to know, but that's what I like about rocks. You can use your imagination. I have a couple activities that I'd like to share with you in a separate video that are um, fun things that you can do with rocks, so I will share those with you soon. Thanks for joining me. Have a good day. RH families, I'm back here with a rock activity that you might want to try yourself. So I have collected some different rocks with my family and I'm wondering if you might want to collect some or you already have some. So if you have, once you have some rocks, you can get a piece of paper and a marker and you can lay out these rocks as I've done here. It's kind of fun to find different sizes and shapes and after you place them on a piece of paper, you're going to take your marker and trace around them. And after you've done that, going around the certain shape of each rock, oops, sometimes they might move on you. Then after you trace them all, you're going to have a puzzle that someone else can try to solve. And one way, one thing that you can do that might make this puzzle a little easier is after you have the rocks placed, you can take a picture of them before you pick up the rocks. So after they're traced, take a picture and then Move the rocks off, and you can go bring this to someone else in your family, and you can say, hey, I've made a rock puzzle.
can you find which rock goes in each space that I've traced? You might have fun doing that together or doing it with different people in your family. It's a very simple activity, but something fun to try. I hope you enjoy it. MRH families, here's another rock activity you might like to try. If you have paint, you can do this. But if you don't have paint, you can do this activity using water. If you have a brush and some water, then you could take some rocks that you find and you could write the letters of your name or even have someone else do it for you. But I know a lot of you are practicing that. I might write B. Can you see that? It makes the rock a little bit darker. And then E. C. K. And the last letter in my name is Y. I might write the letters of my name on those rocks with water or paint. And then I could mix them up. Or maybe someone in my family could mix them up. And they could say, hmm, what's the first letter in your name? And I might say, B, 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 B for Becky. And then I have to get them in the right order. E, B, E, C, K, Y. You can do that with your name or other words that you might like to practice. Have fun with that.